<clears throat> Hello, uh, good morning. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Again, this is Mr. Santos Capellan Jr. Wishing you always a good day. And I hope everything is fine at your end, okay? Now, uh, today I'm going to continue my uh, series of video tutorial. And I would like to discuss today about the offline uh, engineering of a BMS project, okay? So before we start this tutorial, I would like to wrap it, uh, wrap it up what, we, uh, what I had discussed in this uh, tutorials, okay? Now what I have here in my screen is the building management system or building automation. Uh, which shows the different system that is being controlled and monitored uh, from the BMS, okay? So I don't think I need to discuss all this system. Uh, if you are following my tutorial, you have seen all this, almost all these things in my uh, tutorial videos, okay? So let me go to the next slide. Now, so as I said, we will be doing the offline engineering of a BMS project, okay? So when you say offline, uh, it means uh, beforehand you will be doing uh, the configuration of a project, okay? Now, uh, when we say offline, meaning it, you are not connected to the controllers, okay? So you are just doing the configuration offline in preparation for the online uh, testing of the BMS project, okay? Now, uh, in my previous tutorials, I already give you an idea about how are you going to engineer a BMS project. As a BMS engineer, you have to check the BMS or the mechanical and electrical specification of that project to be able to finalize your BMS data point schedule, okay? Now, I had one tutorial for data point schedule. I think there are several video uh, tutorial for this uh, data point schedule. Okay, then part of that data point schedule, you will try to select your controller and field devices. Okay, then uh, front end PC and controller network BMS riser diagram. I have shown you already one typical uh, BMS architecture or riser diagram for BMS, which shows the three levels of uh, BMS, the management level, the system level, and the field level. Okay, I'll, I'll later I will discuss these three levels. Now, control schematic preparation, control schematic preparation. I've shown you several uh, control schematic for different uh, mechanical equipment. Then BMS graphics creation, I have shown you already several BMX sample BMS graphics, okay? So I hope those who are just new to this tutorial, you can watch all these uh, tutorials uh, that I have prepared for you, okay? So the highlighted uh, one here is the control programming of HVAC equipment. So what we will do is we will try to write the control program of an HVAC equipment. In this case, we will do we will be doing a simple one. Uh, for ease of understanding, we will do the twin exhaust fan control. Then later on, uh, we will I will show you the software integration of third-party system like Chiller Plant Manager, VAB boxes, fan coil unit, etc. Now BMS graphics creation. Okay, I already shown you some example. Front and BMS PC configuration and system software installation. Now uh, I will discuss this in the next slide. Okay, now uh, engineering of a BMS project offline. So how are you going to do it? So first you have to uh, configure or set up your front end PC, okay? Now, uh, as I said, BMS system is like a server and client architecture. Now server, you, you will be having a BMS server and you will be having a client, your uh, BMS operator workstation, okay? 
So BMS server and BMS workstation. Now, uh, so in some uh, in some project, you will be delivering only one uh, PC. That will be your server and workstation. But in a different project, you will deliver separate PC for BMS server and separate PC for workstation. Now here in my offline uh, BMS configuration, we will be using one computer. So that computer will be the BMS server and the operator workstation client. Okay, so I'll be using only one computer. Okay, now. Uh, in configuring your front-end uh, BMS PC, you need to install the BMS server software installation. The, now here, the system that I'm using, we are, I already installed the enterprise server. Then you will have to install the license administration, device administrator, BMS configuration server, BMS workstation software. So these are the softwares that you need to install if you are uh, going to configure your system offline. Now, uh, of course, it the software depends on the uh, system that you are going to use. Now, let's say you, you, you will be a part of Honeywell, then you will be using the Honeywell software engineering tools, okay? Then if you all be part of Siemens, then you will be using the Siemens engineering tools. If you will be part of uh, solution provider that offers Alerton system, then you are going to use the Alerton system software like the Backtalk. Okay, so it will always depend on the system that you are going to use. It's uh, major players in building management system, they have their own engineering software or engineering tools. Okay, so here I'm just showing you what I'm using. Okay. So I'm using a Schneider product. So these are the software that you need to install, but I will not show you how to install it. I'm just giving you an idea that before you can configure your BMS project offline, then you need to install several system software for a specific BMS uh, system, okay? Now, after installing, successfully installing all this uh, software and using your uh, workstation, you can start the offline configuration, okay? Now, uh, before we will do our uh, offline configuration, we need to study one BMS I IFC schematic where we will base our offline configuration. So I will show you in the next slide an example of IFC schematic, which I already shown you in my previous tutorial. Okay. Now BMS system configuration. Okay, so first we need to specify an, a BMS server. In this case, that is the enterprise server. Then we need to add automation server. Okay. Then we need to add automation server IO modules. Then we need to uh, configure the BACnet interface. If we are going to use uh, BACnet controllers that will be connected to our automation server, uh, then BACnet controller, then we need to add BACnet controller, okay? Then uh, BMS graphics creation, we will try to create uh, graphics for this twin exhaust fan. Then BMS control logic programming, twin exhaust fan, control logic using functional block diagram programming. Okay, and maybe we can also use scripting, okay? So in offline engineering of a BMS project, these are the things that we need to do, okay? So let me go to the next slide. Now, before we start our, uh, this, uh, offline configuration, let me discuss these three levels of BMS architecture. Now, first level is the management level. Management level comprises the BMS server and the operator workstation, also known as the front end equipment, okay? So the management level, you have there your server and your workstation, okay? Then the management level of control Level of control allows the management and monitoring of the control system from a single point, okay? So this is the wide 
uh, wide site uh, monitoring of the system. Okay, so the management level of control allows the management and monitoring the control system from a single point. So meaning, let's say you are in a BMS room, you have your BMS server and workstation there. From that single point, you can control and monitor all the controllers connected to your management level, okay? Now, system level, number two, system level. The system level, also known as the automation level. Now, I have here my automation server. is associated with controllers serving the main plants, such as the air handling unit, chillers, boiler control, etc. Okay, so we have management level, then system level, okay? So the next level is field level. The field level refers to application specific controllers, such as terminal devices, including fan coil units, and variable air volume boxes and control peripherals. These are the field devices, such as sensors and bulb or damper actuators, okay? So just uh, to give you an idea of these three levels, management, system, and field level. So management, this is the single point wherein you will monitor everything from BMS room, then system level, these are the automation server or your uh, controllers, okay? Then field level, these are the uh, application specific controllers like the controller for FCU or the AB box and the uh, control peripherals or the field devices. Okay, so this is the three uh, typical levels of uh, BMS architecture. Okay, now uh, let's let me show you uh, IFC schematic diagram. Now, IFC stands for Instruction for Construction. Now, you will be able to see this document when you are checking the mechanical and electrical specification of a project, okay? Now, uh, now this one, I already discussed this in my uh, tutorial. Uh, to be specific, it is how to become a BMS engineer part six. So you can look at this one there, okay? I already explained this one. Now, uh, let me go to the next slide. So meaning I will be using this specification or schematic diagram for our offline configuration, okay? Now, now I, I'm selecting, I, I am selecting a portion of that IFC drawing, okay? So I have selected this battery charger uh, exhaust fan, okay? As you can see here, I have here a DDC Okay, so meaning I will be having one DDC panel, okay, that uh, that will control and monitor this equipment, okay. So from my BMS, okay, the management level. So I have here the controller, okay, the uh, what you call this one. Let me go back the system level, okay. So I have here my system level and these are the uh, field level, okay? So in my field level, what we are going to monitor and control is the battery charge, <coughs> battery charger, or this is the battery charger room extract fans, okay? As you can see here, there are two fans, the duty and standby, okay? So what are the points being asked from the uh, IFC? So duty standby status, Airflow probing, so airflow probing will come from air differential pressure switch. Extract fan enable, okay? So we need to give, uh, to be able to control it, BMS should be the one giving the uh, start stop command when the system is in automatic mode. Then extract fan enable, okay, the, for the two. Okay, then you have here the auto on up switch, meaning there will be a selector switch from the motor control, okay? Then airflow probing, this is the differential pressure switch, then duty standby, okay? So these are the typical, I mean, these are the points being asked from the IFC drawing, okay? Now, uh, twin extract fan battery, char battery charger room, extract fan one and two, so there will be two fans, twin, duty and standby, okay? Now, so what are the points? If you are the BMS engineer, based on the IFC drawing, so you will say, okay, I will be having duty 
standby run status. Okay, duty standby run status. These are the digital inputs. So uh, there are two digital inputs for one for duty and one for standby. Digital input, both three contact from motor control panel. Airflow probing. So there will be one. Why one? Because, okay, there will be two. Uh, because it's uh, DPS we will install across its pan. Okay. Or if you are uh, trying to um, make your offer a little bit uh, cheaper, then you can use one DPS. Okay. Now, but it's always uh, uh, what you call this, as you can see here in the IFC, there are two airflow probing. So meaning you have to uh, use two air DPS. Okay, so digital input from two uh, air differential pressure switch. Okay, so two, two. Okay, now I have four digital inputs. Hand of auto status. Okay, so again, there will be two uh, selector switch, one selector switch for the Duty, duty EF and one selector switch for standby EF. Now again, there will be two DO for start stop enable command, then trip and fault status. So there will be two, this will be both be contact also. Then we will have some software point, okay? So two, 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 then two, two, four, six, eight. So uh, most likely I will be having eight digital inputs uh, coming from the field, then I will be giving two digital output going to the motor control of the twin exhaust fan. So all in all, uh, I will be having here eight uh, physical points. When I say physical points, these are the points associated with cable. So eight cables uh, to be pulled from the motor control going to your DDC panel, then another two cables will be pulled from likewise from DDC, uh, from motor control to DDC. So all in all, you will be needing then uh, BMS cables to be able to control and monitor the operation of this twin exhaust fan. Okay. Now uh, I have a note here. Please see how to become a BMSC engineer part 33 because this is my first uh, tutorial for the offline configuration of uh, BMS project. Okay, so this is the introduction for this tutorial. Let me pause for a while.